I got COVID, the new variant, so I'm fine, though. Um, it's just this, whatever, cough is still left in my body. Do you know I live in an apartment and the walls are incredibly thin? You're about to unlock a field of research most people never thought existed. Congratulations. Spaces in the social sciences are made in places that are built for a specific purpose. Let's say a house is a place and a room is a space. That's why houses have specific rooms and why remote learning has been god awful. Schools are built specifically to enable and support learning with an educational space containing learners, educators, and specific learning equipment. And in this space, you will behave differently than when you're just alone in your room staring at the stack of homework you still haven't touched that's due by the end of the week. The internet, in this sense, is a digital place. As we know it today, it had humble beginnings mostly as a thought experiment turned research project that was funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. Allegedly, funding research projects is an ongoing practice of theirs. And it's due in part to the help of our good old friend globalization that we now have to spend the majority of our time on the internet, as it caused the spread of our friendly neighborhood virus and gave us the means to communicate while trying to keep ourselves safe whatever school, work, or recreation. So, 26 entire years after the creation of this digital place, why the hell are online fandom spaces still so damn West-centric, and why are fandoms so predominantly white? This topic is gonna get out of my hands, even if I mitigate it, but I'll give it my best college try. I am focusing on non-Western fans of color, if you want a discussion about white versus non-white western fans, I am not qualified to talk about that for reasons you already know, but I will link sources down below. Normally only patrons get those, but hey, this one's special. Bringing back my disclaimer of if I throw something at you that you can't dodge, think about why and try to learn from it, because let's face it, I haven't seen anyone try to discuss this in a non-academic sense. So a lot of this is going to be just me citing from my incredible sources and my having been in fandom spaces for, let's say, about 12 years. And for some people, my take on this is going to be a little subversive, but I'll try to simplify it in all the big academic terms I'm going to be bringing up as much as possible. And I'll be generalizing a lot from interview answers I got from fellow non-Western fans or fans from the global south because I'm definitely not going to be able to cover all fandoms in existence. All the people I interviewed will be credited below and at the end of the video. So since I'm already throwing back with the disclaimer, let's just go ahead and drive full throttle. I'm going to throw a few issues I want to discuss, then try to make a case for all white fans from the global north or otherwise. Just try to play devil's advocate so that I can explain this properly. <laughs> A lot of fiction and non-fiction is centered on white people, most notably white Americans. Honestly, they're not that interesting, but we'll get to that later. Most of the stuff comes from locals, usually, but the reach of white content is far because it's presumably the best of its kind. And with that presumption comes another, that this white content was made for just white audiences within the West. And it is. I, I don't think I still have to say that. Demanding non-white content from white creators isn't realistic, and frankly, unfair to non-white creators. Sometimes you're just not their target audience, and that's... <sighs> you can make a space for yourself in their fandom, but no matter how good it was or how much it resonated with you, it wasn't made with you in mind. And that's generally why a lot of Western fans are surprised when far-reaching white content has fans from the Global South. This one's a really egregious assumption that you have to be white or maybe even just a native English speaker to be able to navigate English-speaking fan spaces. Or, at the very least, you have to cater to a mostly native English-speaking fan base. It's not a new phenomenon and it's definitely not gonna phase out if we keep ignoring the issue. It doesn't matter if the thing you're into was made in the Global North or not, so long as you're making fan content among native English speakers, they will assume it's gonna happen. And since it's such a widespread assumption, a lot of non-Western fans tend to think that they don't have anyone from their locality who are also into the same things. 
it's not very hard to pull in friends from real life if you have enough charisma or influence over their taste in media, of course, but the assumption that of the millions of people in your country, you're the only one interested in, I don't know, Doctor Who or anime or, or Rooster Teeth or <laughs> Good Omens or, I don't know, whatever the most popular audio drama is these days. Well, it's a little ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. I asked a few people why they thought fandoms they were in were mostly white, and the consensus it seemed was that it was made for and by white people, and that's fair. One person in particular only engaged with white people in the Good Omens fandom because the white folk had opinions that differed from the local fanbase regarding the relationship between Aziraphale and Crowley. Of course, only white people were interested in the platonic nature between the leads. But why? Is there a perceived notion among non-Western people that being really into a piece of media enough to make fan content isn't normal? Is having reading comprehension only a white person thing? Because English is a spoken language in about 68 countries out of 196, due in part to years of colonization. Understanding and consuming four white media in the global south should be common, shouldn't it? And that besides, global internet usage statistics from the last year cite only around 21% of the entire world's user base comes from North America and Europe, and only a portion of that 21% are actually people in fandoms. So no, besties, it cannot actually be because a majority of fans of the popular enough thing you're into are from the global north or white. That's statistically impossible. So is the issue actually that people from the global south aren't that interested in participating in fandom? Or is it that white people, typically from the west, take up so much of the space they share with other people? I am not sorry for bringing this up, besties. I swear it's relevant to our next point. <laughs> So, around the end of 2020, I got way into this audio drama. I'm still in it, I'm making fan content, not engaging in canon content because there was a whole shebang about the creators hiring an artist who does a lot of racist caricatures in their art, but I'm not gonna be talking about that. What? You thought it? This is gonna be about Ellison? This is a video about fandoms, don't be ridiculous. I'd never willingly platform a racist, unlike some people. Anyway. In the Penumbra podcast, there's a character named Peter Nureyev. He's a subversion of the femme fatale character trope, and textually, he's raceless. This is due to a lot of factors, but mostly because the creators were not writing this with race in mind. However, comma, their podcast doesn't exist in a blank void. The first official artist, Michaela Buckley, was a fan artist who drew the characters like this. This man, supposedly, is Peter Nureyev, and the creators liked that enough that they hired Michaela and kept Michaela in their art on until around 2018 when they quit. And since then, this has been the face of Peter Nureyev, the palest, skinniest Asian man you ever did lay eyes upon, effeminate as hell and oddly young looking for a 36 year old man who is nothing but audio waves and absolutely not Asian and effeminate in text. And I took note of this early 2021, livid that a supposedly progressive and definitely mostly white fandom would willingly emasculate a man they widely accepted as Asian, despite America's very long history of emasculating not only Asian men, but queer men of color in general. It just seemed racist to me. The interesting feedback I got from this was that though Asian men did have a history of emasculation from white America, all countries have a rather long history of homophobic rhetoric around effeminate gay men, which honestly thinking back is a bit of a non-starter of an argument and one not really given to me by a white fan, but a fan of color who wasn't Asian and saw nothing wrong with this portrayal of his character. Asian fans were in agreement with my point though, so like, who the hell am I supposed to listen to, right? And that is significant, though it isn't an uncommon phenomenon. Well, the thing with the Marev is definitely uncommon, but that fans of color is kind of an odd name for an identity marker for not a white person. You know, like the rest of the world. This isn't gonna be a debate about whether or not we should still use the term, but for starters, a lot of talks about race and fandom lump together every non-white person, including people who a should technically have no say in the topic at hand, and b don't even experience race as a concept on a daily basis. Really, maybe I shouldn't be so surprised by the homogenization, considering how bad the West is with identifying their own cartographical rules. <laughs> a lot of you even still use the Middle East. 
come with Asia. In conversations specifically about representation and authenticity, it's important that you remember the intersectionalities involved in any person's identity. For example, you can't take the word of an Indian person when the trouble is with a Chinese character. Those are two different nationalities, and in fact, maybe just don't take one person's opinion to stand the ground for an entire group of people. As someone who grew up very, very far removed from the idea of race, surrounded by people who looked like and spoke like me, I have the privilege of saying that I only understood and experienced racism upon being an internet user at all. And that really puts into perspective how incredibly westernized the internet is. The people I talked to had similar experiences stepping into a fandom with a seemingly wide demographic of white fans, of being shoved into that of color box. One moment you're just some guy, the next you're being turned into a minority whose voice should be amplified when talking about things you never had a problem with. In a space you only really wanted to enter recreationally too. One other common thing I heard was that the of color moniker was believed to be a marker specifically for black, brown, and East Asian American fans. Kind of confused by the brown identity. Are we talking about anyone south of the equator? This was a common sentiment for fans entering science fiction fandoms like Doctor Who and Star Trek. It's not a bad experience being put in the box. Fans of color do find solidarity in uplifting each other in any space enough that they end up supporting each other outside of fandom. And that support and solidarity is something that most fans entering these spaces seek out. But othering non-white fans and shoving all of them to one side feels… wrong somehow. This was actually a feeling I encountered in Penumbra 2. A white friend of mine at the time was about to make a Discord server channel specifically for fans of color, and I was technically set to moderate it with someone else, but I didn't feel qualified and felt like it was, in general, a bad idea. Because come on, what would a bunch of random people even talk about when the only thing they had in common was that they had melanin? Isn't that a bit racist? In fact, why segregate fanish activity at all? We're all engaging with the same content making the same kinds of stories about fictional characters. Non-white people aren't a monolith. We all have different tastes, different customs based on where we grew up, and different ways of processing media. You know, like people. When I tried to look this up on fan lore, it didn't seem as if the moderators were interested in logging who used the term first in a fandom space, but honestly, I'm interested in finding out who did it first, just to see if they knew it was about to go down. For a fun time though, try looking up Race Fail 2009 and realize that fandom time is actually a flat circle. To any white listeners still left, you owe it to me to comment if you're not already subscribed or supporting me via Patreon or Kofi. This is not a joke. Going back to my roots for this one, I'm a writer first, fan second. When I say high school AU, what exactly comes to mind? How about a college one? Ooh, fantasy. When we talk about fantasy and historical AUs, what comes to mind? What about fairy tales? For anime fans, uh, do you think about how they'd say the dialogue they're writing in Japanese? Any proposal or dating customs you might be forgetting about? What holidays do they celebrate and how? If you're writing a character who's multilingual and whose first language isn't English, do they code switch? Do they slip in and out of accents? Do they think in English? Do non-Western characters see gender and gender roles the same way you do? I brought this up in my video on fandom misogyny, but when Western fans get down to it, they write what they know and make shit up as they go. And I can't exactly fault them for that, you know? It's really very hard to do research. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know I said I'd play the devil's advocate, but I have a bone to pick, alright? Once I was in a book fandom discord server, this was in the YA height of 2017, and I was venting about how a bunch of mood boards going around for a Latino character were whitewashed if they weren't already black and white. This is despite the fact that the books explicitly point out that he's dark skinned as opposed to his white cousins. And someone told me that looking for appropriate photos or learning how to level and color grade images properly was too much effort and that this was just a hobby. I left that server that same night. Because, and no shade to any western fans in the audience, but non-western fans put all this effort into understanding your politics and holidays and education systems and ways of thinking and customs and history and fashion and most of the time this shit is secondhand knowledge or part of high school curricula 
we just have to get used to all of that, even so far as to do research so that we can socialize with you guys and make stories with you. So forgive me if I don't take the it's too much effort, I just make this for fun excuse because that's a load of crap. And this is applicable to all walks of fan content, not just writing. Looking at you in Canto fan artists who cannot be asked to draw those Colombian kids properly. By defaulting to Western ideas and styles, one way or another, all that says is that the only way any character at all can be imagined is through a Western lens. And all that does is further white voices and phantom spaces. And yes, I can hear you thinking, oh, then why don't non-Western fans just do what they want and live and let live? Touch grass. Well, will you engage with it meaningfully? Will you like those things? Be willing to do the research to really understand it? Will you seek out content like it and willingly promote it because you genuinely like it and not because you think it'll make you look like you're not racist? Like in my fandom misogyny video, chances are when non-Western fans start making content they can relate to, explore stuff white and Western fans alike aren't willing to explore or just plain don't think to, it's gonna be ignored in favor of regurgitating the same shit they're into. It just reinforces these built-in biases no one wants to talk or think about. And why is that? Why is it that when we want you to put in the effort, you tell us it's just a hobby? But when we get into a hobby, we have to put in the effort for you. Because all this is telling me is that you just think it's good optics to be seen agreeing with us, but you won't actually put in the effort to decolonize a space that wasn't meant to be colonized in the first place. Older white fans make all this fuss about how fandom is subversive and meaningful and liberating, but for whom and from what? And the moment someone tries to question that, you trivialize it and victimize yourselves. Turn the narrative on its head and make everyone believe it's people being too sensitive or that the left eats its own or that they have an unhealthy parasocial relationship with creators or call it wank or drama. I'm tired of it. A lot of other fans are just as tired, so much they just leave or stop interacting with fandom. Have told each other to go offline the moment shit gets tiring. Why do we have to give up? Why not just compromise for once? I'm not gonna say some of this isn't biased, and I am definitely not gonna say I brought anything new to this conversation. I am 21 years old, and there are people much older than me who have been in this for much longer than I have. But there is a shit ton I didn't get to explore in here that people much smarter than me probably have in things no fan will ever think to look up. Like western fans turning conversation about the effects of harmful fiction into a thing about ships and kinks and deeming everyone who goes against it puritanical or childish. Or how white fans tend to white knight and get all fans in hot water in a situation that could be easily resolved if everyone just shut their pie holes for once. Likes or dislikes, send me your hate or compliments in the comments, or heck, just unload in there, overshare your own experiences, I don't care, engagement's engagement, and I am not choosy. Big, big, big thank you to all the lovely people who were willing to answer my seemingly endless questions. Alina, Evie, Gabnik, and Cherry. All of them and the Third Eye Collective were the real ones. Links to socials in the descriptions. Don't be stingy with your follows, guys. This video wouldn't be as chunky if it weren't for them. Be grateful. My wonderful source for today's video was Rukmini Panda's Squee from the Margins. If you like my videos about fandom culture and want something to read while you're taking care of a very sick child, you'll love this. Shout out to Jeanette, and thanks again to all the troopers who are honestly one of my biggest motivators. If I didn't have you guys there for me to guilt myself into writing, recording, and editing, I probably wouldn't have made it to 10 videos. Yeah, we're at 10 videos. If you want to have early access, updates, and to be able to vote on what video comes out next, support me on Patreon or on Ko-fi. I'd appreciate any extra support you can give me while I try to recover from this damn virus between writing and recording the video. Stay safe. Bye!